Hi guys, do you have enough money to retire to go to the Philippines? Now when I was in the Philippines, I looked at this quite carefully and I realized very smartly that I didn't have enough money to retire in the Philippines. And therefore I had to come back and rethink, is this even possible? Because how much money do you need to retire in the Philippines? And there's so many contrasting thoughts, like from a thousand US to two thousand five hundred US, depending on your standard of living. And yes, it might be a lot cheaper than retiring in the US. However, for a person like myself from Africa, I don't even have a thousand US that I can rely on every month. So it had to make me start thinking about how could I supplement my what I do have in order. To live in the Philippines and this is the part that I'd like to share with you is it possible to live in the Philippines even if you've got a limited amount of money a limited pension or maybe a younger person and you want to go and still live in the Philippines with your wife but how are you going to go about doing it what is the tools what's the leverage that you've got what is your competitive advantage that is what I'd like to discuss with you so keep listening let's go Retirement. Now that's a big, big decision for anybody to make. Yeah. And some of us are in a position to retire and maybe we've been planning for many, many years so that we get that just right. Um, but in our case, in my case in particular, I haven't been doing that. Actually, in this, just the way that things have kind of worked out. I never ever expected me to get to this age. In fact, this was my beliefs and my thinking. So retirement wasn't something high on my list. So what it has caused me and allowed me to do is to always think about how am I going to support myself and my wife. And this is something maybe I thought I could share with yourselves because maybe some of you are not in a good position to retire to the Philippines, for instance. You've heard from other bloggers say that it's gonna cost between 1,000 US a month up to 2,500 US a month. Depending where you live, you need that kind of money. Yeah. So, you know, maybe there's some of you, like myself, who don't really have that constant income. So, does that bar us from living in the Philippines? Up to now, it kind of it kind of has in my mind because I don't feel very confident to go there, knowing I don't have anywhere near even a thousand a month. However, I do, and I have researched and seen in in the provinces you don't need quite as much as what you would, but obviously the standard of how you're going to live then is also going to be comparable to what you have. So this kind of led me to the thinking, and I did it while I was visiting the Philippines for those two months. Yeah. I was actually scoping the area out, the businesses, just to see how things were run there, to see yeah. if there was any avenue for myself to have some kind of a, a business, to make some kind of an, of an income, because I knew that I'd never be able to rely on just a retirement package. Yeah. And obviously, I'm only 60, so it's still, you know, retirement comes much, much later. So I think what I have to share with you might be a benefit to those who are reluctant to take that leap and go to the Philippines because they're not sure if their funds are going to make it. So have you really thought about perhaps um, running your own small little business while you're in the Philippines? But to do this, you can't really go to a place like Dumaguete, for instance. Because Dumaguete is a place where there are many foreigners. Yeah. And my particular strategy is, is based on one thing. Yeah. And what it's based on is the fact that if you as a foreigner go to the Philippines, you stick out like yeah. a sore thumb. Now that's a good thing. It's not a good thing 
if you're in Dumaguete because I think the locals there have already seen enough foreigners to yeah. get used to those foreigners and they've already broken those foreigners up to ones that have got lots of money or i.e. a very good pension yeah ones that are just kind of scraping by and just buying the basics and then thirdly the lot that are penniless yeah the ones that are really struggling i'm actually talking about going to a place like i went to yeah i went to a place where when you went into that village you're a bit like a rock star <laughs> you get that feeling because the point is these locals have not seen a foreigner yeah and because of that you actually have a very strong competitive advantage so if if you walk around like for instance your village grace yeah i noticed that a lot of them have got the similar type of businesses yeah they've kind of copied one another so you got your sorry sorry shops you got your vegetable sellers you fish got your, vendors got your fish vendors you got your fruit vendors yeah street foods you got your street food restaurants yeah and then you've got the little pharmacy that's yeah it's more like a corporate mm -hmm. pharmacy you've got one or mm -hmm. two corporate type shopping yeah centers but the rest of the small businesses they very much copy one another yeah so you have many many sorry sorry um and this is probably what's happened with your your parents because her parents had a quite a good little business and they uh, were doing food and particularly just making lots and lots of these wraps and the wraps in turn mm -hmm. were sold to traders and the traders were then making spring rolls and yeah. all the various type of cakes out of those wraps but once again because that was quite successful for a period people start copying it yeah and then you just get lots and lots and lots of competition yeah so that is basically where they've landed with lots of competition now which makes business a bit more difficult. And they're fortunate that they were the, the early starters. Yeah. So at least they've developed a name for themselves. Yeah. But this is what, coming back to my idea, if I was going to go there, I would use that competitive advantage of being the only foreigner in the village. <laughs> and I would start something totally different. You know, I'm, I'm not saying what it's going to be. I can give you an example. Let's give you an example. M maybe a, a coffee shop. Okay. Now, I wouldn't use a sorry, sorry, or one of the other shops. You go in with something totally different. And yes, it's true. Maybe Filipinos don't drink a lot of coffee. No. <laughs> but they will. You know, you only need, I mean, that, that village is not that small. It's probably like 40,000 people. You just need them to come into your shop once for yeah, coffee yeah yeah and they're all going to mm. do it because filipinos they, they want to tell their, their friends yeah. quickly hey the foreigners opened the shop in town i had his coffee they all want to then have your coffee yeah okay and if you make a good cup of coffee like i do you know they're not going to have one cup of coffee <laughs> and it's all about you know michael porter he was a famous guy that uh did marketing and you know as long as you've got those three p's you, you've got the, the right price mm. okay yeah. so where you stay you, you look at what the right price is and really with coffee the nice thing about it there's not too much overheads that go into making yeah. a cup of coffee is there so if you can just get the right price for the area you get the right position yeah in the town you know not far out of the town make sure that there's good you know footfall yeah lots of people coming around that is noticeable get good signs and yeah and also have nice decor so it's what's it the price the position promotion and yeah if, if you can promote your business you know for, through advertising yeah. through maybe free coffees for the first couple of months mm -hmm. you know that's the way and you add on to that because another thing i noticed it wasn't just they didn't have coffee places is they also didn't really um, have nice cakes so and that, that's another thing you know the cakes that they had they had lots of bakeries 
Yeah. But none of the cakes were nice. None of them I enjoyed anyway. Maybe my palate is different to the Filipino palate. But I would, I would still like to think that the kind of cakes that I would provide would be totally different and therefore attract customers. Mm. And then another thing you can add on to that is the fact that in the Philippines, in, in many ways, they eat very unhealthily. Okay, the food that they buy. Yeah. So if you just give your, your little shop or whatever you want to call it, a, uh, like a health spin to it, you know, you have healthy food in there. So that you are like adding to the community by trying to keep them healthy. Yeah. So the kind of cakes that you provide will be of the healthy variety, the nuts. And you can then start kind of branding yourself mm. as something totally different, something a bit upmarket, you know, and something for the people that have got a little bit more money that they might rather come yeah. and be seen at than, than some of the other places. So what I'm trying to put over to you is, you know, maybe you are like myself, who haven't really got enough to just retire comfortably and forget about an income. I do yeah. have to think about an income. And also it would be good for Grace, because you could, obviously all of these type of things would have to be done through your, your wife. And she could be running it, you know. <laughs> so she could be doing the work and learning how to, to run this business or teaching staff or so forth and so on. So it'd be very good for her as well. But my point is, it, it doesn't, it, I'm trying to make sure that people are not stopped from trying to go to a place like the Philippines just because they don't have enough money. Understand that if you're a foreigner, that you have got that rock star type of uh, leverage and uh, competitive advantage that you can use to your favor. Yeah. Because I, I have heard it said that, oh, we, we can't work here and, you know, we, the type of work there is, you know, they yeah, make yeah. all kinds of excuses for, and, you know, everything's saturated and so forth. I, I don't actually think that that's true. I think with the kind of leverage you've got because of who you are, you could get a good start in a business in the Philippines. But obviously targeting a place where there's not a lot of foreigners, where, yeah. where, you, where you do have that leverage. That leverage hasn't been lost because people are so used to seeing foreigners already. And they've only ever seen foreigners buying things. Mm. They've never really seen foreigners like adding to the community or, or adding to business. Yeah. So that was just what I thought of talking to people today is um, probably my plan for the future. If I go there, I'm going to have to think about that. I mean, it wasn't just that. I did also go to fish farms. Now, I've always wanted to, do, to run a fish farm or have a fish farm. And there are so many fish farms there, though. Yeah. So I thought, goodness, there's so many. They're doing it there already, so they've, they've got this covered. However, when I went to the fish farm and I asked to go through it and see their processes, I saw, uh, every, you know, because in business, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You just need to have a little bit of competitive advantage yeah. in order to get a foothold in that industry. And I saw quite a few things, because I, I studied up uh, fish farming, and I saw quite a few things that if they added this to their business, it could quadruple their profits. Yeah. So you just need a little bit and you could then maybe be a consultant. You could go from fish farm to fish farm to fish farm and show them, teach them yeah. how to actually make greater profits from their business that's already established. And I, and I think, you know, that could also work. So, you know, you can take heart from this if you are um, wanting to go to the Philippines. Yeah. Don't let the fact that you're not 100% sure that your pension is going to like get you through. I'm sure if you use the leverage that you've got, i.e. who you are as a foreigner, you can start a little business there. And there's nothing to say that that business couldn't support you and your wife and, and your children 
and you wouldn't have to dip into your foreign currency. Mm. So that would be my plan. I wouldn't want to dip into any foreign currency. I'd want to try and earn pesos in that country. All right. So that's just my, my thinking at the time. <laughs> um, we're trying to get there like we've, we've discussed many times. But like I said, we would have to sell up here and I don't know how yeah. long. And in South Africa, they, they're undergoing an election. So selling up is not an easy thing to, to happen right now. People are worried. People are unsure how this country is going to go. So I think it might ease up after election. So I'm hoping that will be the case. And then uh, we could probably make a move of some sort. All right, then. We just mm -hmm. left that as a thought. If you're going to retire to the Philippines, you don't have to worry about money too much. Yeah. If you've got a bit of a business acrement and can yeah. use that competitive advantage that you have as a foreigner. All right. Yeah. And, of course, don't forget to like and subscribe again and share our video and if you want something to ask about philippines because i'm from the philippines so just comment below and also click again our youtube channel yeah watch the other ones please yeah we are having some comments and they're making comments but if they just kind of watch the other videos the answers to those questions would have been there yeah all right guys Okay. Have a nice day. Bye. Cheers. Bye.